Hello YouTube, Robin Hood Bricks here, and it's Brick Hall O'Clock with two subscriber packages and a cheeky little one from Bricklink.com. Well, we absolutely categorically have to start with the subscriber packages because they're the most important, and we've got two to choose from, so I'll start with this one from Henry in Berlin, in Germany. In fact, the other one's from Germany as well, so we're very spoilt, and you're spoilt not to have me murdering the German language uh, as part of my introduction as a result, <laughs> really, because that's what I usually do uh, when I've got packages and I know a little bit of the language, enough to not be offensive. Oh, here we go, we've got a letter. Oh, and what looks like some very, very interesting parts. <laughs> We've got a nice little letterhead there, so I'll read the letter. Hello, Robin. Like all the others, I'm, of course, a big fan of your channel and builds. I'm following your channel now already for two years, and it's always a delightful pleasure to find one of your lovely videos after an exhausting day at work, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. I got back into Lego because I wanted to find something that I could do together with my daughter. She always complained that her mum, my wife, constantly told her to tidy up her room when she'd built up her Lego. That was when I suggested to build a city on a table. We bought lots of Lego in addition and started. But then she got older and lost interest. Oh, <laughs> she'll come back. <laughs> uh, but my interest, meanwhile, was bigger than ever than before. So, haha. <laughs> uh, now I'm building my own city and I gain so much from your lovely channel. My wife thinks, meanwhile, she's married to a little child, <laughs> but also says that all the little details are somewhat so adorable. Yeah, you kind of got to take the rough with the smooth, really, when it comes to uh, family members not understanding what you're doing. Um However, to finance my hobby, I opened up a Bricklink store and I thought maybe I'd find some things in my collection that you might like too. Wow. It's maybe nothing special, but for a few things, I'm sure you'll have some ideas how to get them into use. It also includes a dotted rubber band, which is not real Lego, but maybe you'll also find a use for this. I don't know what that means, a dotted rubber band. Oh, right. I think it's right. I see with studs. Yeah, I see what you mean. Uh, you'll find some printed or stickered parts, of which I know you can never get enough of. Yep, damn straight. Uh, a brand new ray, a fisherman's torso, and some other things you might find useful for your cabinet. 20,000 bricks under the sea. Hope you enjoy it. Be good, stay healthy, and please never stop with your lovely channel, Henry and family. Wow, fantastic. Uh, uh, my Bricklink store is called Smooth Bricks, if you're interested. Well, that's a good shout out to Smooth Bricks, so you can get on with uh, checking them out. If this is anything to go by, they've got some wonderful stuff. So we've got a new ray for the cabinet, and these are just so nice. I mean, I like the old ones, the vintage black ones, but I mean, these with these lovely spots in what looks like medium blue to me is absolutely amazing. They just look so beautiful. So we've just done a very brick-built whale, and now we've got a, a, a one-piece animal, but you know, it is beautiful nonetheless. So that's great. So this is what he was saying with some dotted tape. So it's kind of studs on a kind of bendy bit of plastic, not official Lego, but you can, well, it's kind of like a dots bracelet really, isn't it? So I guess you can mount things to walls or whatever like that. So I'm going to have to experiment with that. I don't know if that's useful or not yet. It might be useful somewhere. Uh, no idea. So we've got three strips of that. So thanks very much for those. Then we've got a few more bags. Looks like we've got a picture or two here, actually. Oh, yes, we've got city pictures. I like city pictures. Send in your city pictures if you haven't already. Right, so let's get this into the light. There we go. Oh, wow, that's a nice beach. We've got a beach with a burger shack. Loads of rocks down here. A nice little island. I like that. And the fishing shack. And now oh, that looks like the Sesame Street set and a surf shack. Very good. And the diner and a bike lane and the tram, fishing boats and so on. Wow, it looks very busy, your city, like mine. Yeah, like that. Oh, wow, a very busy pedestrian street down the middle of some modulars. That looks very nice as well. And there's the tram. Now it's either. Have you done a different color tram? Have you done yours yellow? Kind of looks yellow because that's yellow, definitely. It's either very bad exposure on the orange, but I think everything else seems all right. So I think that's yellow. So you've recolored it. That's quite interesting. Uh, yeah, that's very nice. Oh, I love the I love these three D signs, like the pool one on the detective's office, just showing down the street. They just look so good. Oh, and here we go. We've got a really big Sanctorum building, 
and the new taxi, Spider-Man hanging off stuff, loads of cars, and the brick bank laundrette. I really like that. I want to have that more visible. I always meant to mirror my bank so I'd be able to see that a lot more prominently because it's kind of stuck up a side street on mine. But uh, yeah, well, that is really great. Thanks, Henry, for those as well. I'm going to keep those with all my others nice and safe. Let's get rid of the box. They can't be Lego, can they? These wings? Don't tell me they're Lego. They do seem to have a Lego ball joint. I'm going to have to look those up in the catalogue. They look like anything but Lego. No, they look painted. Surely that's not Lego. Anyway, some big dragon wings. <laughs> that's a bit odd, isn't it? That, my word. What is that? A great big sort of bone sword for Bionicle. I could almost use that myself. It's full sort of big fig scale. <laughs> a Fabuland window. Very interesting. Might be able to use that sort of buried in a bigger building that's yellow. Very interesting indeed. More odd, unusual parts in here. We've got all sorts. We've got gold, big saw, uh, sword blades of different shapes and sizes. We've got some of these that I've already been getting for Under the Sea as some sort of interesting plant. That's a very interesting piece. I don't know what that is. Looks like the sort of jawbone of something or other. Some sort of snaky monster or something like that. With some teeth on it as well. A dragon jawbone. Oh, I've got one of those. Is that bit glow in the dark? It looks like it. Well, I'm going to have to try that. Oh, it is. Oh, I like that. <laughs> wow, that really glows in the dark. Don't know if that's being picked up properly on camera, but that is absolutely glowing in real life. So yeah, that's very interesting. Uh, more blades, more bits from the sea. I can definitely use all of these coloured ones. That looks nice as well. I haven't had one of those before. That, this, all sorts. Yep, all good for under the sea. I think that's glow in the dark as well. Fantastic. We've got, oh, a sailor outfit. I think that's a vintage one. When you said it was a sailor, I didn't realise it was a vintage one. So there's a ski. I'm not sure if that's Lego either, is it? If it is, it's so, oh yeah, I think it is actually. That's very vintage. I don't know what that's from. But this is a really old sailor off the old town sets with a very sort of subtle anchor on the torso. So that was on the um, little freighter sets. Ooh, what was it? 4010 or something like that? 4020, something, something along those lines. Uh, but yeah, he's very nice. And I don't have that, so that's fantastic. And I definitely will not cover up that torso with a life preserver. So yeah, really nice. Like that. And then some sticker bits, like he said. Coast Guard. Well, that'll be good for a sign or just to put on a blank wall where we've just been building. Ooh, not sure about that. That's a bit twee for me. <laughs> that might be one of your daughter's pieces with the old horse head on it. Uh, a present. A nice gold sort of emblem. That'd almost look good on my train, wouldn't it? The Flying Knotsman. Uh, ooh, video piece. Big spider piece, probably Spider-Man. Sort of Red Skull. They can all be uh, album covers, no doubt. Polizei, <laughs> police in a foreign language, less useful. Another present, that's really nice. Uh, a nice screen and a nice sort of flaming, well, I don't know what you'd call that, sort of whirlwind. Yeah, really good. Oh, and one more. Oh, one of those. I just used one of those as a door handle. Uh, right, well, well, that is a fantastic set of pictures, a really nice letter and some really interesting pieces. I'm definitely dying to get this one in my city and find a use where this glow in the dark bit can show up in my undersea. I'll have to use just that bit, if not the whole thing. I mean, if I do need a great big undersea weapon, then I guess this will be it now. Cool. Thank you very much, Henry. Okay, let's tidy up these bags, get all that out of the way, and we can move on to the other German box from a subscriber. And this one is from Benedict. And Benedict is from a place called Buchlow. I'm probably pronouncing that vaguely right, I imagine, Buchlow. And that is near Munich, or München, if you are German. And um, in Bavaria, I presume. And we must have driven right near you at one point when we did the Romantic Road. My wife, Mrs Hood and I. Oh, it's a bit hard to get open this. I might have to rip it in a minute. Oh, cannot get in it for life. Oh, there we go. For life of me. Yeah, so we must have driven very near to your home. 
when we did that. Wow, there's loads of really strange pieces in here. Okay, so we've got a great big bag of four long bar pieces in trans light blue. That's very interesting. I imagine they must have been on some pick a brick wall or something like that for you to get that many. And you've probably since realized you don't know what you're going to do with them. <laughs> they might for us as well, actually. I'm not sure. Uh, there is a little bag of kind of corrugated pipes. I use these on my um, Ghostbusters for their sort of firing sort of um, beams, streams or whatever you're not supposed to cross <laughs> on the movie uh, in my haunted subway station. And they're really quite useful. I mean, I could use those for pumping ooze around a factory or I don't know what else, all sorts of things, or just under the sea, of course, which is probably why I've been sent them. So they're really nice. It's good to get some of those. And then, wow, an absolute mound of sports pieces. <laughs> Somebody wants me to build a football ground, I think, because I've got a bag of, I've never seen these in the flesh before. Um, or is it basketball? I've got two basketball hoops. I'm not silly. I don't think they're goals but these are for holding the sports figures you kind of put that in the pitch and then the ball goes on there and I think you kind of flick the figure I don't know quite how it works or maybe you flick that tab and it sort of kicks or something like that so then you have loads of figures attached to those and then they all stand on bits of pitch <laughs> and then the ball kind of falls into one of these divots and you can kind of kick it to the next one so there's an absolute load. Oh, and that must be a goalkeeper or something like that, that one. So there's an absolute load of these. There's three, golly, six, oh, seven, eight, nine. There's the other goal. 10, 11, two half ones, all in green. Then in sand green, I don't know what, Sport this would be, but there's a few more. That's unusual. And then there's one in red. <laughs> Don't know why they're all different colours. And then these ones must make up a basketball pitch because that has got to be a basketball court. So what is that? Is that going to be the middle like that? And then, oh no, we haven't got the continuation of the pattern. So maybe, maybe that's the underneath the hoop. And then, I don't know, we have a court like that or something like that. Maybe it's just one ended uh, court that I could put in a playground or something like that. Wow. And we've got a bit of packaging. I'm just going to double check there's no letter in there. But there doesn't seem to be. No, well, that's a shame. But thank you very much for adding your name to the packet, at least, Benedict. But yeah, I don't know how I'm going to use that. That's, that's puzzled me, that. That's probably the last thing I expected to receive. But... I've got to say, I do like the printing on this pair at the very least. Maybe I could make that into just sort of a small court with the um, basket overhead and have somebody throwing hoops, you know, maybe with uh, some fencing around the outside or something like that. The only problem is it will take a bit of space for something quite simple, but yeah, I do like it. Really like that colouring. As for the football pitch, wow, it's going to be fun to play with. Uh, I don't know if I've got room for it in my city, but we'll have to give it a go. Uh, yeah, wow, that's really interesting. So ideas of where I could put any of these sporting kind of courts or grounds in the city would be appreciated. At the very least, I could always do something underneath uh, one of the tables, I suppose. And I'm really confused as to these wings. I'm pretty sure Lego have never used something like that, even if it does fit Lego. Um, but yeah, we've got some really nice pieces for under the sea. Love that Glen Dark piece. One of these sort of hollow bushes. And yeah, a wonderful minifigure torso, which I definitely have not got. Fantastic. Right, on to my package from bricklink.com. I'm just adding this to this haul because I figured two packages might not be enough to satisfy your hungry, hungry appetites for packages being opened full of lovely pieces. Uh, and also this one's relatively small, for me at least, uh, which means, well, uh, it probably wouldn't do for a haul all on its own. And uh, it's all jumbled up in one great big bag, it seems, and one piece separate. No paperwork, no letter or pictures. <laughs> I know that one's from Bricklink. That was a joke. <laughs> it would be quite nice though if Bricklink people sent you pictures and, uh, and a nice little letter with each order, but uh, hey-ho. Um, <laughs> right, so first I've got two pieces that were loose. 
One is a little post-it note, which I absolutely adore. It's been on loads of sets now, quite a few friend sets, and I always think of it as coming uh, on the old fishing store because that's the first time I saw it. But um, yeah, it's quite common, but I usually throw one of those in if they're reasonably priced. Uh, and it's attached this very, very oddly shaped piece. Now, this piece has probably uh, the best name, possibly the longest name in the entire Lego catalogue, <laughs> in that it's a uh, plate modified 12 by 24 with 6 by 6 square cutouts at two corners and a 6 by 6 round cutout. Uh, <laughs> that's part 18601, if you're interested. So why did I buy this? Uh, this piece that was part of the Dimensions Starter Packs, uh, 71200. From 2015. Um, well, it's to kind of experiment really, because I thought it was a very interesting and different shape, which makes it really good fun to sort of try and incorporate into a build. It is a bit crazy big, uh, 24 studs, as you've just heard, <laughs> wide, but it's this hole in the middle that really captivates me. I think that this could be used for a building and maybe have a stairway or maybe a spiral staircase or even uh, an elevator shaft kind of going through this hole. And maybe there'd be multiple floors as well. Uh, and they'd all be linked together via this sort of access point. So that's why I wanted to buy one. And there's quite a few of them about because loads of people had uh, the dimensions sort of uh, kind of start packs and lines and sets. And there's been a few of them. Uh, so I figured I'd get one and see how it worked. And I'm quite, quite impressed by it actually because it does look about as interesting as I thought it would be which is very interesting. So yeah, I like that. I'll prop that up there. Then we've got one great big mixed bag here. I'm just gonna try and push this back a little to give us a bit of space at the front. And this is why I've done it combined with your subscriber or uh, packages, just because that's the whole lot of it. Uh, great big six by 16 plate in black can only mean one thing. Yep, a railway carriage is on its way. I've got some blue rail pieces for a uh, mystery build, and there's some more bits as well. What could they be for? Uh, just some of these. Uh, these are for undersea, just for sort of sand coloured builds, uh, the normal bricks. Put those to one side. Ah, and I've been collecting these. I've now got three. I'm in the market for more. I just love the texture. Uh, well, not the texture, the sort of <laughs> it's printing, really. It's completely flat, but it looks like it's got texture. Uh, and these are the doors from the uh, Unexpected Gathering set, 79003 from 2012, uh, where they are the door to Bag End, the Hobbit cottage sort of thing, if you can call it that. Um, yes, yeah, so I've got three and I want more. I'm kind of planning to use them as uh, rail cargo just because they're more interesting than the plain ones on those uh, big reels of electric kind of cable or whatever they are. So hopefully I can move the stickers from the originals onto that. Uh, then we have got, ah, did anyone say army building? Because <laughs> that's what I might be doing with these guys now. Swamp Creature from the set 9461, The Swamp Creature from 2012. Uh, and well, I say army builder. This is actually my only second one. Uh, I've already got one kind of being searched for by a monster fighter, um, kind of near the turtle lair. Uh, but I just really like them. Aren't they just fantastic? minifigures with that wonderful sort of merman type frilled head. Uh, the, the face is pretty interesting as well. Those eyes and those teeth. Uh, and he just looks fantastic. So I kind of thought at the minimum I'd put one of these in my underwater cabinet as well. Uh, but at maximum, well, the sky's the limit really, isn't it? Because <laughs> you're having a massive army of these rank after rank after rank of these marching to global conquest. Yeah, so that's that. <laughs> uh, there we go, put him on there. Got some other interesting parts, another one of those. Yeah, there's these parts. Now, I haven't really experimented with these, but these are about as old as you get with Lego parts. They're kind of arms, uh, when they're all joined together like this, quite a long tentacle arm. And that's what I'm probably going to use them as under the sea as some sort of plant and I can do all sorts of different colors. I've got one uh, in trans neon orange here, but I'll be getting more uh, and the rest are in blue. And you can get these sort of end ones and that's where you kind of held on to the hand when you look to old sets like set 200. Yes, that's 200, three digit uh, number there uh, called Family from 1974. 
and just a couple of these would make up the arm of one of those kind of big fig characters. Uh, so I thought that that could hold something really interesting in my undersea and you could have these sort of swaying in the water currents in all sorts of different colours. So I'm now going to start collecting these as well. Uh, and they've had quite a long life, actually, because they were used right up to the 90s, if not even later. Uh, and you can see both of these colours actually on a set like 6190 Sharks Crystal Cave from 1996, which was an Aquazone set. And you can even combine them, I suppose. You could even go for sort of stripes or something like that or anything. So, yeah, I'm just going to start collecting quite a few of those uh, and see what I can come up with. But, yeah, I like those. Uh, now, I've got some of these bricks in grey, these facet bricks, and I'll be using these as part of an underwater base. I don't think it's a real spoiler to tell you that I'm going to have an underwater base or two, <laughs> because, well, in that vast cabinet of 20,000 bricks under the sea, uh, yeah, it would be foolish not to. Oh, I've got one more of those. Um, oh, there's a vital part. Dun, dun, dun. Now, this is usually either a radar dish that kind of goes around or a plow for a snow plow. And that's what it is on here. It's the final, final part of my uh, Arctic sort of crawler. Oh, it's finally finished and can be put away in a cardboard box with all my other Arctic stuff for the day that will one day come when we do the Arctic. Oh, yes, but that looks absolutely fantastic. So I'm so glad to get that final bit. Brilliant. Yeah, <laughs> it seems a shame. I mean, I'm joking, but it's a shame when you get all the parts of something and then basically tuck it away in a box for another day. But uh, hey ho, these things happen. Uh, what else have we got in here? Got an old phone, which is very interesting. I'm going to use that as part of the controls of one of my ships that I'll be building soon. We've got another minifigure here, a pirate. Now, this pirate in the catalogue is called Pirate 3 but I think we can probably come up with a better name than that. Uh, and I've just been buying a few pirates recently to sort of act as the people running the pirate ship in my fairground and the pirate roller coaster, of course. I've probably got enough now, but they're going for quite cheap, and he just looks fantastic. I mean, you could use his parts anywhere, really. Um, but yeah, he's good fun, so there's that. One of those sort of uh, snowflake pieces in trans purple. Ah, now these are old and quite interesting. Kind of odd shape, if you haven't seen them before. It's sort of a plate modified with a different funny end with kind of a slit on it. And that kind of goes to what would be a socket joint on the bottom. So you can kind of put one of the um, uh, hooks with a big ball in there. Or you can drape a bit of string through that little uh, slit there. So it kind of comes out of the hole there. And then you can have a hook on it or something like that. Because that's what it is. It's kind of the end of a crane. And that's used on all sorts of old sets. Uh, and I just thought that would be good to have it sticking out of some of the um, harbour facade buildings that I'll be building, just to, sort of over a doorway. So when they sort of pull something out of a boat, pull it up to a higher level and sort of in through the window or something like that. So, yeah, when I saw these, I thought, oh, I remember those. Uh, and I thought I'd get a couple. So there's some in black. I think I've got in another order some in a different colour as well. A very rare facet piece, five long in black, that I'm going to be using as part of a build that I'm not going to tell you about. Oh, there's a third one of those. These facet bricks, hopefully there's four. Yep, they're going to make up a nice desk because you can kind of join them together like that to make a really interesting shape. So I thought that would make two sort of interestingly shaped desks. These arms, not that amazing pieces, but uh, they're going to be used on the submarine conversion I'm doing. I'm not going to tell you what they're for. And I think that's about it. Oh, no, one more interesting part. I've recently told you about my plans to do a tiki bar. Well, this has got to be the menu for the tiki bar, hasn't it? Look, you can get a pineapple drink or one a coconut. And they're all three uh, pounds, I guess. And five pounds for what looks like a toasty or is that a club sandwich or something? <laughs> anyway, that's from the uh, friend set. Uh, 41347 Heart Lake City Resort from 2018, which is a bit of an eyesore, to be honest. A uh, bit of a kind of, well, what's the opposite of a feast? <laughs> it's because it's a feast for the eye, but it's not really. That means it's good. It's kind of a bit of a cacophony for the eye. Um, but I do like the really cool parasailer that's on the left-hand side of that picture. Uh, that's very cool. Should get one of those on my beach, really. But um, yeah, that menu is going to be absolutely perfect for my tiki bar when I get round to that. So that was well worth buying when I saw it. Fantastic.
And then last but not least, I think of the interesting parts, actually there's two, there's a sort of inside of one of those boat windscreens, need that for one of my ships, is this, the bottom rung of a yellow garage door type uh, uh, setup, one of those corrugated ones. And I wanted this to basically just brighten up one of my uh, harbour facades as well that will have a, or a yellow door on the bottom of it. Um, but I really wanted to get it as well just to show you the wonderful picture of the 6391 Cargo Centre from 1984, which was one of those sets that as a child... Uh, oh, I just love looking at in catalogues. I never owned it. <laughs> it was just one of those sets that got away that I thought, wow, that is just absolutely perfect. And in a way, that's a good set to kind of uh, give an example of what I'm going to be doing for my harbour facades. Lots of sort of different bits all pushed together. A bit of a garage door here, and another door there, a different sort of tower there, uh, sliding doors this way, that way and every other way. Uh, and I think that is a really cool set for inspiration. So, yeah, any excuse to show that fantastic set is worth it for me. So, yeah, a really good order. Uh, quite a small one, but two very generous gifts from Germany, from both Henry in Berlin and Benedict in Buchlo. So thank you both for those. And, uh, yeah, all in all, a fantastic haul. <laughs> The best thing about a hall where there's absolutely loads of things that you've never seen before is that there's plenty to play around with and experiment with and that's one of my favourite things in LEGO actually. I'm playing around with these and all these interesting pieces in here is going to be great fun as well as my big interesting plate modified 12 by 24 with 6 by 6 square cutouts at two corners and 6 by 6 round cutout. Oh, oh you can nearly run out of breath saying that. Um, yeah, there's absolutely loads to play with, so I'm really, really happy with that. So, as always, thank you very much for watching. It is appreciated. Do remember to like, comment and subscribe for more awesome LEGO videos. And if you value this channel, there are many ways to support it. Just check out the links in the description below. And next time on Robin Hood Bricks, I think we'll be going to the fairground this Friday. Fingers crossed. Uh, I've got a bit of time freed up so I can have a good go at that because it does take a long time each time. Uh, but yeah, I'm hoping to get another few rides uh, incorporated. Really looking forward to that. Uh, and then on Monday, I'm hoping we'll get back to the cargo yard. Though some of the uh, uh, amendments you've suggested this time do require me to get a few more parts. So we might have to take a pause on that just for a week. Uh, and then come back to it after a, a recently received haul. Um, so, yeah, I don't know what we'll be doing on Monday as a result, but whatever we go up to, I'm sure it'll be great. So thanks, Henry. Thanks, Benedict. And to everyone else, see you.